Hey guys, Mystical Gaming, our side gaming channel, is officially back after a three year hiatus. And to kick things off, we're doing a Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker Let's Play on there currently right now. Go subscribe on there today if you guys like everything Nintendo and all things gaming. Catch you guys there. Link will be in the description below and in the ad card in the right corner. Man, I have seen these challenge videos all over YouTube as of recent. Can I beat this Pokemon game with this Pokemon? Is it possible to beat the Pokemon games with no items? All these ideas are fantastic and they honestly provide a great amount of entertainment. With inspiration from these series, I decided I want to hop on the train too, but with a different little twist. I want to take important trainers teams to see if they have the ability to beat the Pokemon games. Like today for example, with our good old buddy Ash Ketchum. I want to do an analysis to see if Ash Ketchum has what it takes to beat Fire Red and Leaf Green. When doing this challenge, there will be no BS anime mechanics, meaning Pikachu will practically be ineffective against Brock. We're going to see if Ash Ketchum has what it takes to beat Kanto without plot armor on his side. Before I get into the analysis though, I want to cover some more things so you guys can get a full understanding of what this project is going to entail. So when it came to deciding on what games to do, I decided on Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Pokemon Yellow and Let's Go Pikachu could definitely be options, yes, but in those games, the starter Pikachu is buffed. In Let's Go Pikachu, Pikachu has perfect IVs. In Yellow, Pikachu is holding an invisible light ball. Pokemon Red and Blue are trash. Oh, Mystic! What about Ash Gray? As much as I love Ash Gray, it's not an official Pokemon game. Going into a bit more of the Pokemon being used, I will be taking the approach of when Ash actually does get these Pokemon in the anime. So for example, Bulbasaur will be available right after Misty, and Pokemon like Muck will be obtained after Erika, but before Koga. We can't get precise locations of where Ash got the Pokemon, but we can make solid estimates. Keep in mind that Ash also released some Pokemon on his journey as well, so Butterfree and Primate will be released. All moves will be available for Ash's Pokemon too. This means all the Pokemon Ash gets, they'll have access to move tutors, HMs, teams, etc. Post game moves are a no go, and so are egg moves. Ash didn't breed any of his Pokemon. To pretty much sum up what I am doing so it's simple for you guys to understand, I am doing Ash's anime journey with Pokemon game mechanics and with plot armor removed, like I mentioned earlier. Ash is a regular trainer in Kanto, so it's fair game. We will test to see if Ash has what it takes to beat all the important battles in the games. So all the gym leaders, Blue, Giovanni, Elite Four, and Champion are going to be considered. Also note that all of his Pokemon will be available. There is no let's have the Pokemon ride at Oak's lab in this challenge. As long as Ash had that Pokemon before a said important battle, he is fine to use it. Ash can use Tauros against Koga if he wants to is what I'm trying to say. The Safari Zone is in Fuchsia, so that counts in my book. Ash's Pokemon will also stay as they are in the anime, meaning Pikachu, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur can't evolve. Pokemon that Krabby, however, can evolve because it happened in the anime. With Pokemon that can evolve, they will be evolving at around the point they did in the anime. So for Pokemon like Krabby once again, Krabby will be evolving right before the Elite Four, or maybe and even in the first match of the Pokemon League. Keep in mind too that in this analysis, Ash's Pokemon will be overleveled a bit. And underleveled Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Pikachu are going to get slapped silly if they aren't overleveled by a good amount. Okay though, I hope you guys understand what's going to be going down here with this challenge analysis, and I hope you guys do enjoy. With that being said though, let's hop right into it. Starting off our journey, we begin in Pallet Town, like a typical Fire Red and Leaf Green beginning. Rather than getting one of the three starters though, Ash will get Pikachu instead. Since Gary isn't in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the closest counterpart for him is Blue. To keep this playthrough close to canon, Blue will be starting off with Squirtle. For the first battle against Blue, Squirtle will go down easy no problem at all. Once Blue is beaten, we will then move on to the next important point of interest being in Viridian Forest. In Viridian Forest, Butterfree and Pidgeotto become available for use. After Viridian Forest, we run into a huge problem though involving Brock. Brock is a huge wall for Ash catch him because he doesn't have anime logic anymore. No sprinklers can go off Ashy boy. So without the anime logic, how does Ash beat Brock? Well to be honest, he only has one Pokemon that can even dent Brock even a little. Butterfree. Butterfree has two moves that can beat Brock. Confusion and Sleep Powder. Sleep Powder is learned at level 15 though unfortunately. So Poison Powder and Stun Spore could be used for faster damage and potential paralysis too if you don't flick leveling up Butterfree to level 15. If the battle does get super difficult, Sleep Powder may be the only way to win or luck can be tested with just going for Confusion. This this is the best way to defeat Brock with the limited options we have. It's not impossible to beat him, but Pikachu nor Pidgeotto will be effective at all. Butterfree is also quad weak to Rock, so be very careful with Butterfree in this battle. Level 15 Sleep Powder is probably going to be your best bet though. In the next battle, we face off against Misty. Now in the anime, Ash's Pikachu refused to battle Misty because she's their friend. However, we're going by game rules, which means we can use those super effective electric type moves to our advantage. And because we have to play by game rules, Pikachu isn't going to be absurdly powerful like Ash's. It's going to be your standard unevolved Pikachu, so its stats are going to be less than amazing. But with a little bit of over leveling, Pikachu will prevail in this battle. What you'll want to do is get Pikachu to level 26, which is 5 above Misty's Starmie so you can learn Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt isn't necessary, you still can use Thunderbolt 
Thunder Shock, but Thunderbolt is definitely highly recommended. This 95 base power move is going to be your key to victory as it puts a serious dent into her team. Now, I would definitely recommend still using Ash's anime strategy of having Butterfree use Stun Spore on Missy's Pokemon to paralyze them, following up sending Pikachu out to hit them with a devastating Thunderbolt. It might not be fully necessary, but I would rather be safe than sorry as Stormy can really be a pain to deal with. After Misty, we head on over to Vermilion City to take on Lieutenant Surge. Again, we get to abide by the game rules rather than use the anime logic, so we can use more than just Pikachu against Lieutenant Surge. However, we still will avoid evolving certain Pokemon, so it won't be a battle of the Raichu situation. Surge will also have more than just a Raichu this time around, so things still aren't going to be easy by any means. Bulbasaur will be a solid option to use against Surge's Pokemon, as it will only take half damage from their electric type moves, and it will be able to do neutral damage with its grass tip attacks. But the real secret weapon will be Pikachu. See, fortunately, Pikachu can learn dig, and will bless us with the opportunity to dish out some super effective damage while also only receiving half damage from their electric type moves thanks to the electric resistance electric types also have. Keep in mind Voltorb also does have access to Sonic Boom, so that still consistently does 20 damage. However, I don't think it'll be much of an issue for Ash's team. Now again, as these Pokemon won't be evolving, it goes without saying that they will have to be over leveled if they want to have any easier time taking on the important battles in these games. With that said though, it's still doable, no doubt. Now after Surge, things get a bit messier to talk about as the anime really jumbled up the natural progression of things in the Kanto region. In the anime, Ash and his team would be taking on Sabrina next, but we actually need to take on Erika and Koga first, as this is the proper order traditionally done in the games. So naturally, we'll be starting here with Erika. Erika won't really be hard as we have two different Pokemon that can take her head on no problem. Those Pokemon are Charmander and Pidgeotto. Unfortunately, Ash had to release his Butterfree right before Saffron City, so that takes away another solid member on this team, but they can still survive. The strategy here is pretty simple, Aerial Ace and Flamethrower. Aerial Ace is the most consistently good move Pidgeotto can have, as Wing Attack is 60 base power, but can also be lowered in accuracy, and Fly is only 70 base power with 95 accuracy, all while taking two turns to pull off. Those moves can be used to put in some serious damage of course, but Aerial Ace is just the most realistic option here. Flamethrower is a level up move learned by Charmander at level 31, so a small amount of overleveling is needed just a tad. That's expected at this point. With their super effective power, these two Pokemon undoubtedly earn Ash the Rainbow Badge and allow him to progress on through the Kanto region. Hopping into this next gym battle, we have Koga. Koga may be a little more difficult, but at this point in time, we have all the available Pokemon Ash ever obtains in Kanto. If Ash still had Butterfree, this battle will be a lot simpler because Butterfree would have psychic type attacks. Unfortunately though, we don't. Charmander also hasn't evolved yet, so powering through this battle of Charizard can't be done. As far as his other Pokemon go, none of his other Pokemon stack up, aside from Tauros. Tauros can just attempt to power through Koga's entire gym. Just set up strength and I think that's the best option. Return is great for later on because at this point, Tauros has got captured so the happiness wouldn't be all that high. Pikachu if did could also be used against Koga's Muck, but I really don't think it's going to do all that much damage though. All in all, I think Tauros is the best option. Before we step into Sabrina's gym, Giovanni needs to be defeated at Sylphco. Normally, I would just lump these kinds of characters in one entry, but Giovanni's Sylphco team is very different from his gym team, so it'll require a slightly different explanation. Ash probably wouldn't have access to any psychic type moves at this time, so Giovanni's Nidorino will need to be taken on with Dig from Pikachu or by using Tauros. His Rhyhorn will be a lot easier as Squirtle, Krabby, and Bulbasaur will be four times super effective against it, so that's covered. Unfortunately, Ash wouldn't have Primate by this point, so we lose an awesome Flying type Pokemon. However, Muck will still be able to learn Brick Break, so the coverage you need is there. And lastly, his Nino Queen can be taken out of Squirtle and Krabby, in addition to any ground type moves there might be. Up next is Sabrina, and the best option here is once again Tauros. All of Sabrina's Pokemon have paper defenses, and Tauros's truck physical attack can truck through this entire team literally. Everything else in Ash's team kind of just gets obliterated. I really wish Ash would have gotten Stronx in Kanto, because we could have included that. Tauros is the best option here, easily. After this matchup with Sabrina, Ash can then evolve his Charmander in the Charmeleon, and then shortly after in the Charizard. After his sixth badge in the anime, that was the time Ash's Charmander evolved. It was on his way to the Cinnabara Gym. As for Charizard obeying him, it will obey because of gym badges. The entire playthrough because of gym badges, his Charizard doesn't disobey him once. But yeah, Charizard is now available and you guys will see that this Pokemon is going to help out a lot. The penultimate gym leader in Kanto is the fire type gym leader, Blaine. Blaine shouldn't be a problem either. The water type moves coming from Krabby and Squirtle will be able to put in serious work. Dig from Pikachu can definitely help, and Tauros will be able to learn Rock Tomb via the team from Brock. Now having three unevolved Pokemon will be really risky at this point, but this is the path Ash has chosen to go, so just overlevel and pray it goes well. 
The last gym leader we have is Giovanni, and personally, I think he is one of the easier gym leaders to deal with. For Giovanni's gym team, it's pretty easy to deal with with either Squirtle or Bulbasaur. I would just use Squirtle though because it will have Surf or Hydro Pump, and just all around better defenses than Bulbasaur. Krabby is a no-go until it evolves into Kingler for the most part though, although you can use it if need be, it's still an option. Squirtle can deal with this gym, but it's going to get outsped by everything, so potions should definitely be kept on hand. Rhyhorn and Rhydon should go down very easily, no problem. As for Nido King and Queen, they can be two hit with Surf, but Squirtle also goes down in two hits. Unless Squirtle is really over leveled, like maybe around like level 56, I would personally just use Hydro Pump and pray for good accuracy. With Hydro Pump, it should be a lot easier too. So with potions and Hydro Pump, Squirtle should be okay, or if you want Surf for accuracy, that's fine too. If Squirtle goes down, like always, just use Tauros. Remember that Krabby doesn't evolve until the Pokemon League, so Kingler can't be used here. Squirtle and Kingler actually have the same special attack stat. Kingler is just faster of 75 base speed, so that's why Kingler is actually slightly better, but in this case, Squirtle is obviously the best choice for Giovanni. For the Elite Four for Ash's final team, I think it should be Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Charizard, Muck, Tauros, and Kingler. But any Pokemon can be brought in. The choice is up to the player. So I will mention all the Pokemon that can be used against the Elite Four effectively. Now we can finally move into the Elite Four, as conferences do not exist in these games. And of course, the first person we're going to be going up against is Lorelei. Luckily, Ash has quite a few Pokemon to help him out with this battle. Of course, there's Pikachu for the water types, but cannot do it on its own, of course. In comes Bulbasaur with a variety of grass type moves. Tauros had that useful Rock Tomb, and even Charizard can come in and do some serious damage against Jinx. Of course, Ice Punch needs to be avoided, but I personally believe we'll be fine. Personally, Charizard is the best option for this fight, though. Let's be real. Bulbasaur is going to get slaughtered. And with that, if Catch him, manages to win, Ash can move on to the next battle. For the second Elite Four battle, Ash is up against Bruno, which shouldn't be too much of a problem, really. Both of his Onyx should be no problem with the likes of Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and now Evolved Kingler. As for his Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, and Machamp, you'll have to rely on both Pidgeotto and Charizard's flying moves. I think Pidgeotto should be fine if it's over-leveled, like a lot, but I think that Charizard is the best option, making that portion a lot easier, so just use Charizard for that part. However, Rock Tomb is on Hitmonchan and Machamp, so an eye needs to be kept on them drastically, but it certainly won't mark the end of Ash's journey. I hope that he can get past it still. And with that, he's halfway to the champion. Ash now finds his way in the chambers of Agatha's room, who was Professor Oak's previous lover. She has some very fierce poison Pokemon and a crazy Gengar, so this battle is going to be a little interesting and very rough. The best option here is to just use Charizard with Flamethrower. Spam it away. Pikachu can knock out Golbat easily, so no problem there. A really random option to use against Agatha, though, is Muck with Thief. Yeah, it sounds nuts, but hey, it could work. If Muck had access to Egg moves, Shadow Punch could be used, and that would be super dope, being the better option rather than Charizard. But Egg moves are a no-no for Ash catch him because no brain until post game anyways, and Ash never bred any of his Pokemon. So Agatha may be a little bit of a pain, but it's definitely possible. Just spam Flamethrower with Charizard and you should be fine. Oh boy, next we have Lance, and some of you are probably muttering to yourself, oh, Lance is going to go down easy with this Ice Beam. Uh, <laughs> think again. Squirtle and Kingler only have base 50 special attack. Even with Lance's Pokemon getting nuked by Ice attacks usually, this time they're going to be hitting for way less power. It can be done though if Kingler is grinded up to level 70, and you can then attempt to take him out with Blizzard. This is with his Dragonite primarily. Dragonair will go down in two hits with Blizzard. Dragon is special in this gen though, so Kingler may go down after a few outrages. If that's the case, then just use Taurus. It's been the rescuer Pokemon at this point. With Gyarados and Aerodactyl, Pikachu has these Pokemon under control, especially more with Gyarados. Aerodactyl can still be taken out, but it's a little more scary because it's super fast. The safer option to me against Aerodactyl is Muck with Thunderbolt or Tauros with Rock Tomb. Intimidate Tauros is also nice because that makes it so Aerodactyl's Hyper Beam and Ancient Power get nerfed. So yeah, Lance is rocky, but I mean, it's possible. I think a few wideouts may potentially happen though. Now here we are, Ash versus the champion Blue. He's basically the same as Gary Oak, so it's very fitting to say the least, in concept. This is not going to be easy by any means though, so I hope you guys are ready. Of course, it's kind of been the deal throughout the entire playthrough, but this takes it to a much higher level. And I do mean that, literally. From what I've calculated, all of the unevolved Pokemon like Pikachu, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle are going to need to be overleveled significantly if they want to be useful and survive this fight. I'm talking level 75 versus Blue's strongest Pokemon, his level 63 Blastoise. For Pidgeot, you'll of course want to use Pikachu or Muck with Thunderbolt. For Alakazam, you'll want to use the same exact strategy for Sabrina. Just crush it with Tauros. Rhydon is easily taken out by a way overleveled Squirtle Bulbasaur, or with a moderately leveled Kingler. Exeggutor will be child split at Charizard. Arcanine will be pretty simple with Tauros having both Earthquake and Rock Tomb. Squirtle and Kingler can easily knock out Arcanine too. And then finally, Blastoise will be a big pain in the butt. You might need to cycle through Pikachu, Bulbasaur, and Muck to defeat it. Full Restorers and a Citrus Berry will be the bane of your existence. However, it's not impossible. If half of this crappy team can get extremely overleveled, Ash could very well become the champion of Kanto.
So at the end of the day, can Ash beat Fire Red and Leaf Green? I believe the answer is yes, but barely. There are so many good Pokemon used throughout Kanto in these games, and honestly, his team doesn't cut it unless you overlevel his team beyond belief. I got a question for you guys though. Did you find this video interesting and fun? If so, would you like me to do this again with other trainers? Comment below and let me know because this was actually a lot of fun to do. We can do any trainer from the anime or from the games and test your teams in any said Pokemon game. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Want to support me further further in game called Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leon, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Austin Lega, Jarrett Wiz Austin, Sodden Grider, and Nigma97 did. And I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapped this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.